The Diocese of Santa Rosa filed for bankruptcy today, citing new lawsuits from more than 200 survivors of child sexual abuse by Catholic priests. I team reporter Dan Noyes first reported on the diocese more than 25 years ago. He's joining us live now with an update on that investigation, Dan. Well, Julian and Kristen and I spoke to Santa Rosa's bishop, but also to survivors and their attorneys who believe the church is trying to avoid responsibility for horrific abuse by priests. In this petition for Chapter 11 bankruptcy filed this morning, the Diocese of Santa Rosa estimates its assets between 10 and $50 million and its liabilities to be the same because of a flood of new lawsuits from survivors of clergy sexual abuse. I spoke with Santa Rosa Bishop Robert Fascia. Why is bankruptcy necessary? Well, when the perceived claims against an entity exceed that entity's ability to generate the capital to pay those claims, I, I don't see any other option. I first uncovered cases of child sexual abuse by priests there in 1994. I, I have never had sex with them, okay? Found Father Austin Peter Keegan working in an orphanage in Mexico after abusing children from the Santa Rosa Diocese. Ever had any physical contact with them? Well, the same physical contact I'll have with you, okay? Something like that. No, I... The next year, Father Gary Timmons received an eight-year prison sentence after my investigation into the crimes he committed at a summer camp in the Mendocino wilderness. What do you say to all those young men now? Now, after a state law opened a three-year window for victims to sue, no matter how long ago the abuse occurred, the Santa Rosa Diocese faces more than 200 new lawsuits. You are being heard, and, and we do have compassion for you, but we also have limitations in terms of the assets that I, as bishop, have the right to distribute. I asked Attorney Joe George Jr., who represents dozens of those survivors, about the bankruptcy. This is another way for the diocese to avoid responsibility and do the right thing by survivors. In 2016, the Diocese of Santa Rosa made their parishes and schools separate corporations and now claims that they should not be part of this bankruptcy filing. One of the things they're trying to do, it's known to everyone, is to shield their dollars, whether it's uh, cash, real property, pledges, shield from who? From survivors. There is a real feeling that this is about protecting the church's assets and not doing the right thing. How do you respond to that? That's the reason why the bankruptcy offers an objective look, because Basically, the diocese or any entity in bankruptcy turns over the books and says, here's our status. Here's everything that we have uh, attachments to. You know, I just think it's a travesty. Dan McNevin from the Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests tells me the bankruptcy will be another barrier to discovering the truth. If they succeed, um, they'll limit what survivors can receive in compensation and they'll freeze the files that are so important to understanding what went on and what still may be going on. So that's going to be a crucial part of the bankruptcy case. Can the diocese shield the assets of parishes and schools, or will those contribute to the pot of money that will go to more than 200 survivors of